love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Pam. What's good? Killer, how you doing, man? I'm good. How you today, man? Really good, man. Getting better. That's what's up. What's up, Stat? How you doing, man? I'm great. Great. The money yesterday. green. The on. money green and the gold. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look like you was Harlem okay. shaking for a minute. <laughs> the That's money the Harlem green. Shake. I forgot about that dance. The money green and the gold. Yeah. It's a good day, guys. It's a good day. Really good day. Yes. Okay. So, but it's not a good day for Terrell Suggs. I'll tell you that. So Terrell Suggs reportedly pulled out a gun and threatened to kill a man in an argument while at Starbucks. He said he feared for his safety. Thoughts on the whole incident and then this run-in in general. This happened in Scottsdale, Arizona. Wow. This is this is pretty interesting because um, I wouldn't think that that... Terrell Suggs would would do this in in um, Scottsdale, and I know everybody is innocent to proven guilty. However, I'm 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 very happy that he's doing well, and the other guy's doing well because in a city like Arizona or a state like Arizona, in a city like Scottsdale, um, pretty much everybody got a gun, so. I would think that that would be the last place for you to flash a gun, especially if you're not using it, because they have this law where where you could protect somebody else. Like, so say if you if you're flashing a gun, somebody else that has nothing to do with it could shoot you, trying to protect me. So I thought that was a very dangerous game that that he found himself in. I mean, at that point that you felt threatened for your life. He was better off using it than flashing it. That's what I'm basically saying. And I'm I'm happy he didn't use it, but it was very, very dangerous. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand that rule? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much probably the same in Florida, but they will not hesitate to use brutal force pause in, in Arizona, especially on a black guy. To me, some dealing with today. I just want to know what Beth is here today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, just um, Beth, um, I'm, I'm just asking what Beth I'm dealing with today. I just see because I, some you got a lot of personalities. Because if we wasn't if we wasn't on TV right now, you would say the fuck what happened to even one of them. But you're very glad that everybody's safe. <laughs> I was actually taking a page out of your book. <laughs> you, you normally say this is what Mace was trying to say. <laughs> so I figured, I figured I'd help you out. And you normally say don't help you. So I, you know. <laughs> I'm glad that everybody's safe as well. <laughs> Yeah, if you feel like if you, you feel know, like you gotta flash it, you sh- you probably should have used it. If everybody in that <laughs> star bro- bro- that day, I really glad that y'all okay. Mace doesn't care if anybody was okay in that starburst. Personally, when nobody's looking, I'm just telling y'all, no, he doesn't care if nobody was okay as long as, as long as he but me, me me and him wasn't hurt. Because I don't care neither, to be honest with you. Look. Person and, and all jokes aside, of course we we're happy everybody's okay. Yeah. But look, Terrell Owens. I mean Terrell Owens. Terrell Suggs. I don't know him off the field like that, but on the field he's a pretty wild nigga. And these football niggas got reputations of being wild niggas. Some of them, not yeah. all of them, some of them, especially against females. If you ever Google the female brutality of football players against women, it's outrageous. It really is. Um, secondly. 
Uh, like May said, I don't know how many people are familiar with Scottsdale. I spent some time in Scottsdale myself. Yeah. I've and and everybody's situation is different. And I'm not saying that nothing can happen to anybody anywhere. But and I'm not saying I'm I'm Terrell Suggs either, but Scottsdale is one of them places. First of all, Starbucks, I don't really know a lot of people, and anybody can walk in anywhere, like I said, but life threatening situations in Starbucks is kind of crazy. And then that's the one in Scottsdale. I feel real safe in Scottsdale when I go to Scottsdale. <laughs> I guess I don't know if niggas follow you, be where you at. I, I, Scottsdale seems like a pretty safe place. Scottsdale, for people that don't know, is not Phoenix. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the Bel Air or whatever you want to call a Phoenix. It's, it's very nice there. Not a lot of crime and a lot of shit goes on. But, hey, at the end of the day, I can't, I, I don't really have much to say. Mace made a great point. I wouldn't pull it. And that, that, that's not just... Phoenix, that's not just gun laws. That's not just whatever. Don't ever pull a gun out nowhere and yeah. don't and don't use it. You know what I'm saying? Um that kid Benji from Chicago, that story, supposed to be probably the best nigga that ever came out of Chicago, says over 20, 30 different NBA players, and he got shot in high school for pulling out a gun on somebody and not using it, and the other person had a gun. So, um, I agree with Mason. It's just not about gun laws. It's about don't ever pull a gun out unless you're ready to use it because you never know who else is ready to use theirs and who has theirs on them. Yeah, and I was thinking about it. Like, what was the conversation that led to you feeling like your life was threatened in Starbucks? Like, how did that go? You're getting coffee, you're getting a bagel, and and what what happened? Like... Was it enough sesame seed or like what happened to make them so escalate? Basically what happened was Suggs, he backed into another vehicle behind him and then the vehicle had the camera footage and audio of it. So then they both got out the cars and got in an argument and then like it escalated a little bit. Then I guess he got back in his car because he told him to go away. And then Suggs said, Basically threatened that he would kill him. Basically got back in his car and flashed his gun out. And then. That was the off. dumbest thing you could do <laughs> with your back turned showing your gun out the car. So what what was supposed to happen? Now, if if that guy sees the gun and he says. Get down and just shoot, then everybody would say, what what just happened here? Right. You can't do that, man. Killer is right. These football players, man, they got to chill out. Not all football players, but you definitely can't be doing that. And that Starbucks, just because somebody backed into a, what, a parking space? Well, backed into his car. So Suggs backed into his the car. The other dude's car, yeah. So he hit his car, yeah. and now he wants smoke with him. Yeah. But he said because of the way the argument went, I guess he feared, because he said he, he felt like he was in a dangerous situation. He was probably high. <laughs> he was probably, you hit my car and now you're beefing with me. It probably would escalate. If somebody hit your brand new car and then they they they're picking out a problem with you, you already got a damaged car. You you're really not trying to hit up. This is crazy. And also, as far as what Cam was saying, I thought um, Scottsdale was relatively safe, too, which I didn't know because, yeah. you know, I was just there this weekend. Long story short, the fight ended up happening at, you know, a spot, and it was like a whole bunch of dudes, like, coming out the spot. So me, my instinct, I went behind a black car because I'm like, okay, like, I, like, I'm not going to, like, run and stuff like that, but I'm not going to be standing there. And everybody else is standing around and watching, and they were like, why did you... Basically asking me, why did I go away? Because in Florida, people are pulling out guns. I'm not going to stand right. I don't need to watch a fight. I'm good. Like, I don't. That's not exciting you don't have for me. Your that camera all the time. Out? You're not a part of that no. generation. Why you want the there? camera out? That's so silly. Like, every everybody's seen fights. I got to stand there and watch y'all fight for what? Like, I'm going to go. I'm you not didn't want stand the TMZ the $800 for Absolutely the video? Absolutely not. Bump the video because it was the people performing. Bump the video. Bump that. Why would I stand right there and watch y'all fight? And everybody's like, oh, don't worry. People don't pull out guns here. 
I was like, you never know until it happens. And so, then the next day you hear like about you Terrell Suggs. Well, yeah, well, so I was like, okay. Well, I want to I want to I want to add a disclaimer to that real quick as far as what you're telling me. It depends on the timeline too. Mm-hmm. Now, if it was over the weekend or the last 5 6 days, it was a, probably a bunch of people from out of town in Scottsdale because of the NCAA tournament. Right. So, uh if it happened in the last 4 or 5 days and it's a bunch of people in town from out of town, I know you don't know you don't know what what you're dealing with, but I'm just saying in general, the majority of just when it's a regular time in Scottsdale, it's a pretty safe place. Yeah, but so you don't, got events going on, you don't know. Yeah, so don't try that on Super Bowl or right. Yeah, and, and that's what I say because the Scottsdale's locals were like, "Oh, don't worry." I'm like, even I would worry regardless, just because that's you know what I'm just used to that. But in addition, I was like, a whole bunch of people are are here from out of town. Like, you don't know what could pop off. So don't think just because that means it's cool to go watch and, the fight. And Lambo stat <laughs> ran behind a black SUV. <laughs> yeah. Lambo stat. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, let me tell no. you something. <laughs> let me tell you something about Arizona. Arizona is not the place to go to jail at, man. Yeah. Arizona, them niggas don't play. They, first of all, they got the regular police and they got several different gang units and task force. Like, I was I had a, a party in Scottsdale. This may have been five years ago. This is probably before COVID. I haven't really been doing a lot of partying or doing shows or whatever since COVID. I've been very selective. But before, before um, COVID, I had a party in Scottsdale. It's early 2019, probably, and and um, I was outside the club, and a dude was kind of further away from me. And he was like, Cam Dipset. And you know, for people that don't know, this kind of our sign for, for Dipset. This is really just me, East Coast, how West Coast got this. This is really me, East Coast, but I kind of started that. So somebody like Dipset. So I did this to them. The gang unit, this is outside the club, just ran out of nowhere. Like seven undercover cops, niggas with the tactical gear on them was like, you throwing up gang signs? I said, no, I'm part of a music group. He said, we seen what you just did with your fingers. I said, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was there for that. <laughs> yo, bro, I said, yo, I just threw up the, this is the sign for the group. Now, nah, out here, that's a gang sign. I said, well, I don't know what it means out here. If you ask anybody in the rap community, this is East Side, which means Dipset, same thing. Nah, well, they pulled me, they made a big deal. The niggas I was with, they threatened to take them to jail just for trying to talk to them. They, the, the, the Scottsdale, Arizona police are vicious and it's gang units because you got to think about it. It's a, that's the one state, and don't get me wrong, I tell people keep your ID on you no matter where you're at. But that's the one state, if you don't have your ID, you're definitely going to jail. And they'll figure it out from jail because they got a lot of immigrants there from Mexico. So they, they're they really big on... Um, immigration, gang unit, task force, all type of shit, man. This was just outside the club saying, throw a nigga dip set, what's up, man? I was had to sit on the floor, sit on the curb for 25 minutes, run my shit and all that, and I just was telling the nigga, what's up? <laughs> it's Scottsdale's for you. They're not playing. And, they, and their jails are so, they have the inmates outside, and, and you have to wear pink all day. Is it pink? Jumpsuit? Yeah, they did. Yep, their jumpsuits are pink. And it's 120 in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And they used to complain, and they was like, you know what? I asked the guy, why do y'all do that? He said, we want to make sure you never come back to jail. You never get in trouble in Arizona again. Good work. So moving along, the Kings G League coach Lindsey Harding will interview for the Hornets head coaching job. She could be the first woman to get an NBA head coaching job. So one, what is you guys' opinion on the state of the Hornets? And then what do you guys think about her potentially getting the job? I'm going to let Cam go first on this, boss. What do you think, Killer? Hmm. Lindsey Harden I'm getting thinking. a job. Y'all both thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. thinking. Uh, um, first of all, this is good that she that she uh she's getting the, the interview. 
I say that. And but I don't know much about the Hornets. <laughs> Pardon me, the, the G League the team that she was coaching. Like I don't really, <laughs> I haven't been keeping up with the Kings G League to see how good the Kings G League are. If they like champions, or did they win? I don't fucking know. You know, I, I have no idea. But I'll say this: some people I don't know, like Ann Wolf. For people that don't know Ann Wolf, she's a former boxer who's now a boxing trainer. And she gets a lot out of her fighters, the fighters that she does train. You know, mm. I don't know if they go hard for her because it's more of a mother, tough ass mother figure or whatever else. But um, I really have no idea what to say about it because, besides that, I'm happy she's getting the interview because I don't know her resume. To be honest with you, um, I didn't I didn't pay attention to what her resume is. Uh, secondly. It's definitely going to be an adjustment in the locker room if, it, say, she does get the job. Yeah. Because I remember the first referee, female referee, years ago, and it was, you know, they kind of players. I remember Chris Paul in general, and, and all right, right now, in general, off the top of my head. There was other players too, but I remember Chris Paul, her first game, she refereed one of the Chris Paul games, and Chris Paul was like, You don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> yelling in her face because I guess she made a call that Chris Paul didn't like. Um, sometimes, look, it builds morale sometimes and sometimes it's like, what is this lady doing the fuck in here, man? Um, so I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I, I'm still, I'm, pardon me if I'm, I'm pondering while I'm talking to y'all because I'm thinking about it. It could be good, it could be bad. Look, Greg Popovich had a female assistant until she left and went to the WNBA. Becky Hammond. Uh, she now, yeah, she coaches the Aces, right? Yeah. yeah. So she won two championships leaving Greg Popovich. Now, this was Becky Hammond, and you asking me about her coaching Charlotte. I'm going to say she got the resume for it. She got NBA experience. She's a two-time champion in the WNBA, and I could go a little bit more for a resume. I don't know Lindsay's resume that well to make a decision right now. But it's good to show diversity and at least get in the interview. This is this is an interesting um, topic. It seemed like um, this is a growing mindset that I see um, growing as, as society evolves. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you are asking me the question. I'm really never in favor of um this might be a a whirlwind of a statement, but I'm never in favor of women leading men. It don't matter what it is. So that's Why are my... you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like never in favor. <laughs> I'm, 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 me personally, that's just my my own. I was I was just brought up traditionally, just like with with values that they they've been very instilled in me, and I and I try to stick to those values. Um, I think she could do a great job. Not that she's not capable of it. Um, I just don't think women are supposed to be um, leading men. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to move on <laughs> from there. Oh, nah, I, 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 no, no, I didn't know you were I, I, I kind of disagree with that. Cause I kind of disagree with that. It depends on what it is. But Mace, I get where Mace is coming from, too. Certain people would, certain people would never have that. Yeah. Me? I'm a part of that yeah, group, I, I, you know? No, no, no. Yeah, you, my grandfather, my <laughs> uncle, few of y'all niggas. <laughs> it would, it would never happen. <laughs> yeah, but for me personally, me personally, whatever's going to maximize my dollar, I'm in favor for. <laughs> that's just that's just that's just me. You know what I'm saying? No, no see, I'm, I'm for liberation. I'm for you know the the growth of a woman. I'm for all of those things. I'm just not for 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 that for that 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 particular piece. No, I dig it. And I understand where you're coming from, but I'm just, just can personally. I, I know you got your opinion. I got mine. 
My opinion is whatever maximizes my dollar, I'm in favor <laughs> for. Look, the Queen of Harlem, Stephanie St. Clair. <laughs> Stephanie St. Clair, she ran Bumpy Johnson in them niggas. Yeah. Whatever year, the 40s, 50s, whatever that was, she's the queen of heroin. All them work for her. All the toughest niggas that niggas like to bring up, Frank Lucas, Nikki Barnes, uh, Bumpy Johnson, they all underneath her. I mean, Nikki and them came later, but she was running the whole heroin racket in Harlem in almost 100 something joints ago, 80 years, however long ago it was, but they didn't care because that was maximizing they died. These are, we don't talk about her, mm-hmm. and that's what Mace is kind of talking about. It's kind of like, man, sweep her under the rug. Call the niggas who's putting the work in. And that's how certain men are raised traditionally. And I get it. But me personally, if it's going to maximize my dollar. Look, I was signing the Epic Records mm-hmm. years ago. The, pres- the president was Polly Anthony. <laughs> you know, I, I, she didn't do the best job when I was there, but she had a bunch of niggas who was underneath, underneath the roster during a tank there. And it ran smoothly. So I get where Mace is coming from, but for me personally, whatever's going to maximize my dollar, I'm for. But I get where he's coming from. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not of that mindset. I'm just of the mindset of what are we getting out of it? <laughs> and then just to add to that for people who are watching, so she was the number one pick by the Phoenix Mercury in the 2007 WNBA draft. She basically had a 10-year career. And she became the only woman head coach in either the NBA or G League when she started coaching the Sacramento Kings G League team. My follow-up question, because I know you guys were saying you don't know her resume. Dawn Staley did previously, you know, yeah. try out for head coaching job, didn't get it. Yeah. If it was Dawn Staley, would you be for it or you're still just like, no? Oh, Cam would be for it. <laughs> Cam, we know Cam would be for it. Because if, if it makes a dollar, um, to me, I'm... I'm of that mindset that that women, there's powerful women everywhere. There's there's anointed women. There's there's great women. But I just that's not the structure that I see in my brain. You know, my brain. I'm not wired like that. So that's just it. Me, me personally, if it's Dawn Staley, I'm with that. You know yeah. why? Because Dawn Staley looks like she's relatable to me. I, if I can vibe with you. And and we could talk and we get we on the same accord. I don't look at it as a sexist thing. You know what I'm saying? It's the only you know where it goes south at? Where it goes south at is when you start having sex with them. Then feelings get involved and it starts getting emotional. If you keep <laughs> sex out the building, <laughs> if you keep sex out of it, <laughs> then should it go smooth? And, and as much as and as much as <laughs> Don Staley is a beautiful woman, um, fly fly lady, dope as fuck, I wouldn't I wouldn't be sexually attracted to her. I would look at her more as one of my homeboys. And I'm not saying she's a guy man like that. Very very nice looking uh, lady. But I'm more I get when I see her with the Louis Vuitton on. I'm more like yeah yeah nigga fuck is yeah. Like I I would swipe the jacket, wipe brush her shoulder off. Yeah, coming in with that Louis, huh? Let's get to work. I get that vibe from Dawn mm-hmm. Stanley. To me, me personally, I don't look at her as a a feminine female coach. She's not gonna come in there with heels on. And I'm not saying any of these ladies are. I'm just saying if you if I'm going off the eye test, off the eye test, I'm gonna get like I can vibe with Dawn Stanley. I won't have a problem with that. So so when the game is over and guys got their towels on and they're walking around naked. Um, how do you, how do you, how do you protect that as the coach? Because coach, that's a part of the interaction with with the players. What I, do you say about that? I, I said that when we first started talking about this topic. I said it would definitely have to be an adjustment in the locker room. Yeah. That's the first thing I said. Oh, I so, get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know how that would work. That's a great question, but that was the <laughs> kind of how I let the His segment like, off. Yeah, I said. Let's, Let's go. Where are we going tonight? Is she looking like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look. Let me give you an example. You don't think it does? They'll just they'll just do their thing. The assistant coach or whatever. They're gonna be men's in there, and then when they're ready, they'll bring her in. Kind of oh, like okay. at the yeah. Colorado game. Like we were all in the locker room. I'm not seeing nobody walking around. <laughs> like. Okay. Yeah, and, and and it's like, it's like for me, Don Stanley. Like, oh, put your shit on, nigga. Fuck out of here. Like, we're homegirl. Yeah. 
if y'all ever watch The Wire, my homegirl Snoop, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Snoop from The Wire. You know, we hang out and shit. We hung out in the club before. Somebody tried to give her a hug like a kiss on the cheek. Like, yo, what up? And I'm not comparing Don Staley. Yeah, to I was about to say. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you that's the, the demeanor I get. I'm not saying I'm not comparing her to Snoop. But she might be Snoop or co- coaching women's basketball because she killing niggas. So when I say that, I say that like somebody tried to come over and give Snoop a hug and kiss on the cheek and she pushed the nigga off nigga, fuck is wrong with you, bro? Fuck is you trying to hug me for? I look like one of them niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not comparing her to that, but I'm just saying some people don't give off that energy. And, you know, you know when a girl trying to flirt with you or trying to, you know, give you them, them puppy eyes or give you one of them looks that, and, you know, it seems like she's flirting. I wouldn't get that from Dawn, me personally. And then another player, former NBA player Ben McLemore, was arrested Tuesday and booked on accusations of first-degree rape and other sex crimes. So, one, how do you guys feel about the situation and all of these players recently who've been getting in trouble? What's, what's second-degree rape? What's, what's third-degree because when you say first degree, I'm I'm not that well versed. I don't know in. second and third, but it just says he's facing first degree rape and first degree unlawful sexual penetration, which are eight oh, yeah. felonies. So yeah, he's definitely he's definitely um quoting not quoting him, but charging him with something that's really serious. Yeah. This is not play play. And Ben McLemore, is that the guy? He he used to play for the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Wow. This is not good. This is totally not good. Because somebody like him, he, he was supposed to have a really good career as an NBA player. So what, what city is this in? I was looking at the name. It just seemed like I didn't know where that city was. Yeah, I don't even know how to. <laughs> I... He went in one of them towns. He was in that Oregon. He was in that get out. Oregon. He was in that get out. Uh, you can hear the name of that city. Try to pronounce it. You try to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> you the one went to school for journalism. <laughs> We're rappers. Ah. That means you're great with words. Okay. <laughs> S- speak it in syllables. Clack of a, clack of a Oregon, clack of mus. That's that that's not good. I don't to know. all of the <laughs> students that went to school with that. Stat is on TV and can't <laughs> pronounce clack of mus. To be fair, to be fair, a lot of journalists have phonetic <laughs> spelling out for words that are difficult. All right. I don't got no pho- phonetic spelling or a <laughs> teleprompter telling me what to say. So, oh man, oh uh, this this is just not good. No matter where where it happens at, um, for a guy that's an NBA player, it doesn't seem like they're going after money. It seems like they're really trying to um get some justice, and I prefer that when people, if they feel like they're wrong, that they they try to do something about it, not just get money from it. Because that's all I'll say. Because people be taking my clips and making it mean other things. I got to watch what I say. I just heard that when I was about to talk about this. That's what they they supposed to do. Yeah, man. When you're on fire. Yeah, this is... What I'll say about this is real quick is that, first of all, I I don't, you know, until... And when it comes to rape, snitch, and shit like that, I don't prove nobody guilty until they're guilty. I, I use the old fruit school phrase, innocent until proven guilty, because once you're locked into this or, or you're convicted, <laughs> you're a registered sex offender. Forever. Yeah, that, that's not good, man. Yeah, you got to tell the town you moved in the town. You, can, you can't be 200 feet within an elementary school. You got to change your jogging direction, whatever you're doing. That shit is a real, real thing. So... That's what I'll say first. Secondly, what I'll say is this to all these uh, athletes out there, and not just athletes, entertainers, people in the public eye, 
and not necessarily even the public eye, but just people in the public eye for this particular statement that I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. When they want to fuck with you, meaning the media, they will fuck with you, bro. I haven't heard shit about your career. You've been in the NBA since 2013. I didn't hear about you as a basketball player. I ain't hear you had a good night one night. And maybe I missed a few nights. I'm not going to lie. Cause, but you ain't never been one of them ones. Yeah. You ain't never been like, oh, what's Ben McElmore doing? Or whatever his last name is. You ain't been, but you got a rate now. You had your headline. Not only that, he hasn't even been in the NBA in two years. He's playing a professional league in Spain. Mm. So therefore, they're making a story out of you. And you don't even play in the NBA no more. You've been out for two years, two and a half years. It's going on three years. You haven't even been in the NBA. So that goes to show when they need a headline or they need a story, they will make you the story. No matter how good or bad you are, you are a former NBA player. So now you're news. Because there probably wasn't much other news going on. So athletes, entertainers, people in the public eye, don't put yourself in these situations unless you, I mean, you, and don't get me wrong, no disrespect to the female or anything. If that happened, then that's fucked up and he needs to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But at the end of the day, if it's if the shoes are on foot, like it ain't even go down like that. Be careful of the situations you put yourself in because now you're news. You, ha you haven't been news. You haven't been caring what's going on with you. Nobody knew you was in Spain. Nobody knew you was over there. But now niggas know. Be careful. And make better decisions. And actually, Me personally, I just know. Go ahead, Go ahead. Yeah. It's and that's why that was a great question, Mace. What's the degrees of rape? Because we knew somebody that was mm -hmm. accused of rape, and it wasn't done physically, it was mental. It was one of them, if you don't do this, then I'm gonna tell people this. And da da da. And I didn't know it in high school that that was rape. Yeah. I was saying it wasn't fit. I didn't know you know, when you're in high school, I'm thinking to myself. And I realize it's the 90s. I'm sitting there saying to myself, well, should he be in trouble for talking out of it? But that's a law. Yeah. That's a law, too. You have to be careful. Even if there's no physical damage done, if you mentally mindfuck them, so to speak, and that may not be the right term to use, but I use it for the time being, and tell them, yo, you better do this or else. That's a rape also for people that don't know that. Yeah, and that's why I keep saying, yeah, because you're educating them on what exactly is, is taking place. When I look at this, they're saying that, um, according to the news, he's he's actually, this case was sealed. It was actually sealed, so they wasn't even trying to put it out there. I guess whoever got the news started running with it because the, the court case had the document sealed. And he was supposed to, but they, but once they got the information, they put it out there and even put his court case out there like July 1st or something, he's going to be in court. So whoever got this was doing very nasty work. Any final thoughts? No, so his lawyer was doing his job trying to keep the indictment still yeah, it's definitely like until, yeah. until they got to the bottom of it. But, you know, rape is just one of those things. It seemed like today that people are just calling rape. I think, and I think anytime somebody does rape somebody, this is a serious matter and it should be prosecuted at the fullest extent of the law. However, they need to start making a law for people that, like, just maliciously say that somebody raped them because what that does for artists, what it does for 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 sports, just anybody, it messes up a person's entire life. What cuz if somebody say this about you if it's not true, it's going to mess your whole life up. Whether it's true or not. And they 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 need to put something there to protect both citizens, men and women. On that note, we're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss the Ringer's top 30 players. Don't go anywhere.
She called this thing about us toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. The Warriors will play the Blazers. Underdog fantasy has Steph Curry at six first <coughs> points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? High is Portland. Portland, he's going to have yeah, more. Gonna go okay. I'm going to go high as well. Draymond Green is at seven and a half rebounds. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Higher. Hi. Okay, and DeAndre Ayton is at 12 and a half rebounds. Do have higher or lower mace? <laughs> uh, if he gets out of the snow, is it still snowing in Portland? No, snow, the air mattress. The, <laughs> the <bed>. air mattress. <laughs> I'm going lower. For us. <laughs> I'm going lower. I'm, I'm roughly going lower. He's an underachiever. <laughs> I'm not fucking with that nigga. Okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So the Ringer updated their top 30 players. I'm going to read the first 10 and I'm curious on you guys' thoughts and if you guys would rank it the same way. So right now they have Jokic at one, Luka at two, Giannis at three, then SGA, Embiid, Kawhi, Jason Tatum, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and lastly, Anthony Davis. One, what is you guys' thoughts on this list? And is there anybody on this list that you feel like should not be on this list? They said that they updated the 30. Yeah, they're top but 30. You, but you only named about... How I named their top, the, the first 10. Oh, okay. The 30 is a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't. I definitely don't agree with Ringer. I definitely don't agree with Ringer. Ringer, listen. I hate when people try to paint a narrative that's not conclusive, and, it, and it, it leaves out very pertinent information. There's no way you got a top 30 players and you don't have Ja Moran in it. It's, it's just, it's absolutely, what's the word I'm looking for? Asinine. It's asinine that you don't have Ja Morant. <laughs> <laughs> but they, but they might, they might just mean for this season, murder, because they said it's updated. They may, I don't know. I'm not co-signing them, but I'm just yeah, saying. You, okay. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's go based off the fact that it's this season. Okay, if it's this season, then I, I, I could go with that. Okay, but I, I gotta keep Ja alive. I gotta keep Ja alive. Ja was acquitted. It was self-defense, killer. The nigga threw the ball like a baseball. And 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 Ja corrected him about it. The thing about it was Ja was never in trouble with the NBA like that. That was just a part of, you know, son. They t they tacked on his jacket. He was yeah. in trouble with the NBA for keep flashing them pistols. Yeah, Ja ain't have a pistol in months now. He's been cool. He haven't been ja shooting. He haven't been showing no guns. He wasn't at Starbucks. The thing about it is. It ain't about Ja. Ja, ja would be playing. Ja got hurt. It isn't the NBA for Ja ain't playing right now. Ja's hurt. Ja would be playing if he wasn't hurt. He been stopped being suspended. So you agree with Ringa's top 30 list? What's those last five people stat? Yeah, so the last five we got Hawaii, Jason Tatum, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis. I'm taking Anthony Davis out and putting LeBron James on there. I'm taking mm. that out. So I'm, taking, I'm taking Anthony Davis out. Why is Anthony Davis on the top 10 list ahead of LeBron James? That's crazy. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, this is that's real. That's ridiculous. That's good. And can that's I just ridiculous. add super quick? I wouldn't have Kawhi oh. above LeBron. So they actually have LeBron at 12. So it's Anthony Davis, then Devin Booker, then LeBron. Yeah, I wouldn't have Kawhi ahead of LeBron. I'm just saying that we're going from this year, like Cam said. Are we going by this year or not? Because if yeah. we're going by this it year, says, uh, it says this uh, it says updated, so we we're going to narrow it down and keep it to this season. Yeah, uh, this yeah. Season. Then there's no way that you have Kawhi above LeBron. I don't have Kawhi above LeBron. In fact, 
I wouldn't even have Kevin Durant above LeBron if we're going on this season alone. I think LeBron has been having a phenomenal year. Uh, so y'all know I'm not I'm not hating on LeBron. I'm, I I give credit where credit is due. He's had a few great outstanding games, and I can't say the same for everybody else. The the other two names that we named, and I love Kevin Durant is 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 one of my favorite players. Yeah, I can agree with that. LeBron James is having a sensational se- season, um, especially with Anthony Davis being out whenever he's out. Other players playing well and not playing well. You know, we got to realize before the trade deadline came, D'Angelo Russell was was almost on a buffet. They had him out. Yeah. So they go, pick, go figure out what y'all want to do with him. They just couldn't figure out a trade. He's been playing decent since since the um, since the trade deadline. But at the end of the day, not decent enough to get them out the ninth seed or eighth seed, whatever seed they end up in. Uh, when everything's said and done in the next couple of days. So, yeah, LeBron, I agree with Mason's segment. The bigger picture to me in this list that we're naming is that the first five, none of them are from America. And this is what I'm talking about. The first five <laughs> players, none, none of them are from America. And this is what I'm saying. The game done went worldwide. Yeah. Ain't one <laughs> nigga from America in that top five list. That's that's not that's a fact on they list, and I'm not mad at the top five. I'm not mad at it at all. Mm-hmm. If you look at the top five, not one nigga is from America. If you want to throw Joel Embiid in there because you know he's playing for America in Olympic school, that man is African. He's not from America. So the game has grown. It's evolving. It's not just our sport anymore. It's a worldwide sport. So where now niggas is coming over here taking this thing more serious than American players. And you, got, you got Luca, you got Luca, you got the Joker, you got Giannis, yep. you got SGA, and you got MB. I'm mm-hmm. not mad at that list. I'm not mad at that team. Imagine that five against yes. whoever America yeah. wants to put up when we're talking about when we're if we're talking about how niggas is thinking about um changing the all-star game around and making it international versus America. That's a that five is crazy. Yeah, that's why like Luca and SGA in the backcourt. Then you got Giannis and the Joker and then B. Yo, listen, that's a dangerous five. So I'm not mad at the top five. That's why I asked you more about who's at the bottom five of the top ten. I'm not mad at the top five. LeBron James would definitely be. I don't know where to place him, but I agree with Mason's assessment as having a better year, definitely than AD. Uh, reason maybe Kawhi is because of their record. But Kawhi got a bunch of help on the team as well. And uh, Kevin Durant, you got Booker, you got Bill, and you got decent weapons that we thought were going to help out on the bench. I'm not mad at Mace putting them above above both of them for this particular season. But I'm not mad at the top five neither. The top five, I like their top five. And and you can argue with whoever you want to put in there, but America, stuff the fuck up because you see where this is going, right? Do you see where this is going? Yeah, if y'all don't, do you see where this is going? It's going light skin because the next five is mainly light skin. Is is Jason Tatum, Stephen Curry, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker? Is is this probably explains a lot? This is not a dark skin league no more, killer. Like we grew up in, is is really yeah, I, light skin and they balling. I'm not going against them. I'm yeah. just saying this is what I'm I'm, I'm giving good commentary. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't really looking to the skin tone because Joel Embiid is black as a motherfucker. But I'm more looking at to where niggas is learning how to play, where they're learning to play basketball at. Mm-hmm. You know, so this means what they're teaching over there in Europe is translating and being better than what they're teaching in America. With the, especially Canada. It's so many Canadian players that we don't even talk about that may be role players on teams. But Canada yeah. just coming down here like Drake and Justin Bieber. Just come in and taking shit over when they want to take it over. You know? They're not going so, to school. They're going to basketball school. So they whole day in, in school is basketball. They're not they're probably not even doing ma- math. They're just but second yeah. second period is is bounce pass. Third period is jump shots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they, they have basketball schools overseas. Like over here, you have to go to class and then you gotta Pass your classes to play. I believe some of the schools over there are just like that, Killer. 
They just playing all day. So you know, with more reps, you get better. That's how they call it. I don't know. I'm not privy. Yeah, that's why you're the expert. I'm not privy, privy to that information. But if that's the case, I dig it. But whatever's going on is translating over here. And it's not looking good for America. So if Mace is correct on what he's saying, you're right. Yeah. Uh, you, so especially college, and that's why a lot of niggas started skipping college. Because, look, you got to pass your ACT or your SAT. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go to college and get good grades and be eligible to play. And niggas is like, I just want to pass four classes. <laughs> and, 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 and gym. That was my whole shit during the whole high school. I just need four classes in yeah. gym. you like, year. why I got to pass all, all of like, this? I'm going to play basketball. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to yeah. school. And, and yeah, we're saying exactly. to the kids, you should go to school. But... I think Luca was a pro at 15 years old, if I'm correct. Yes, he was yes. a pro at 15 years yeah. old. He haven't even finished right. school. He was already playing all day. Yeah, this is a fact. Luca been a pro since 15 years old. <laughs> right. And then I want to get you guys' reaction to this dunk that had happened. So Tory Craig and Andre Drummond missed an alley oop dunk in the Bulls game versus the Knicks. What oh did you guys God. think of the failed attempt? And if you were the coach, because, you know, the Bulls did end up losing that game, what would you tell the two players? This is a sensitive topic because I know my boy Sin is watching this. You said, so if, <laughs> if this was the New York Knicks? No, the Bulls. So, like, they ended up losing the game after okay. they went for the, went for the dunk and failed terribly. I'm gonna let Killer go first on this because I I I I don't really like um drumming in them so what? no really? I really don't. <laughs> okay. I don't like. I'm the looking bulls. at this shit now. I, I'm about to look at it now so I can give my the right opinion. Not as a person, no. Anthony Drummond. Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond. That's the big man. He be trying to play God all the time. That's what I don't like. He be trying to bring the we ball up. We interviewed him, remember? <laughs> yeah. I didn't like when he was playing like that. Pause. I like him as a person. All right. I, I, see, I see what happened. I see what happened here. Oh, my. I see exactly what happened here. What happened here is for, for the audience to, to gain context of why Stats asking this question. The Bulls are down nine points. The Bulls are down nine points, and what what quarter is this? The second quarter. What quarter is it? Second quarter. They're down nine. They get a steal. It's Andre Drummond on the fast break with homeboy. He tries to throw it off the backboard to Andre Drummond. No, Those he was throwing high. it off the back for his himself. Self. And this nigga jumped oh, on okay. his back. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Like, you know, oh, okay. I thought, so when I'm I get this steal, it. killer, and I go like this, you know, I'm throwing it off the backboard and catching myself, and some wild nigga just run behind you and just try to dunk the ball over your head. Like, what? So, <laughs> so, even, so even, even worse, even worse now that you explained it like that. <laughs> It's two it's different scenarios. First of all, it's two scenarios. You can't get if Andre Drummond is trailing. No, but he's it's, it's behind him, killer. It's like it's like he's right I'm here. I'm looking at the video. He's right here behind I, him. The, and he take off and it's like, you see, I'm trying to get the ball myself, and he just come over his head. Ah, and both of us missed. No, what I'm saying is this. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm looking at the video, and now that you explain that to me, I see what you're talking about. What I'm saying is this. If Andre Drummond is trailing, and you look and you throw it off the backboard, as a big man, you're thinking, okay, he about to throw it off the backboard to me. Because when do you throw it off the backboard to yourself down nine? in the second quarter <laughs> to try and show them. You don't do that in the second quarter, damn nine points. Throw it off the backboard to yourself. First of all, you don't throw it off the backboard to Andre yeah. Jordan. No. You don't throw it, that, that, you don't throw it, it to yourself. threw it off the backboard or... from the foul line. That's the problem, Killer. <laughs> no, you're missing my he's point. He's one I, foot I, I inside 
the um... what I'm saying is, I get I get your point, but you're missing my point. What I'm saying is this: I understand what you're saying. Regardless, you shouldn't be doing that. Whether it's to yourself, Andre Drummond, or anywhere else, you shouldn't be looking like you're throwing it off the backboard down nine points. Just my opinion. Secondly, that's a. Secondly, I get back to your point. You throwing it off the backboard to yourself <laughs> now, some big nigga just coming anywhere. Like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Yo, I'm trying to throw it to myself. That's number two. I, that's your point. Thirdly, from Andre Andre Drummond's point of view, it's when you see a nigga throwing it off the backboard, so you like, it got to be for me. He see me trailing, but it wasn't for him. <laughs> But you, so but so but in Andre Drummond eyes, I can't fault him. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking like, okay, we about to make a movie. Fuck it, he throwing it off the glass. He trying to make a movie for himself. Down nine points. I think the whole scenario is stupid. I don't put no fault on Andre Drummond for that. I know what Mace is saying. I'm not disagreeing with Mace. What Mace is saying, but you don't do that down nine. My whole. <laughs> Yo, My yo. whole thing would be no. I agree with that, you on all three points because he he took one step inside the three and threw it off the backboard like he's like mm-hmm. he's like he's Skywalker or something. Yo, yeah. he was too yeah. far from the jump. He was gonna miss the dunk anyway. <laughs> that's what. That's why yeah. Drummond probably came and said, "You know what? I'm gonna help him out because." He's too far from the basket to be throwing it off the backboard. But I thought it was an yeah. unwritten rule that if I get the steal, I should get the layup. What I do you think about that? I just definitely didn't think he was going to throw it to himself because that just didn't make sense. So as that's was, what I'm saying. Like, that, why would you do that? that? That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. And, and I, I don't know about that unwritten rule because I don't see plenty of fast breaks where a nigga trailing and niggas get crazy. Yeah. I don't, my, one of my favorite is when Jamal Crawford get the fast break throw between his legs off the backboard for Blake Griffin. Like, and, and when you get that fast break and you see a nigga who could dunk behind behind you, you usually be like, let's make the move. But yeah. I get homeboy too. I get homeboy too because homeboy like, yo, Andre, you ain't one of them. You ain't one of them. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you ain't one of them catch it off the fast break. Ass niggas, you that ain't your thing. This was about to be my movie. I'm trying to go on Sports Center top ten. So I did. I listen. All three scenarios that I laid out, I'm not mad at none of them. I'm just mad at Homeboy. I'm not mad at Andre Drummond. I'm mad at the nigga for doing that in that scenario. Yeah, because you confuse it. You confuse it. He hurt himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, fell. he fell. I was waiting to make sure he was <laughs> not hurt. You know, I would, that's the rule. If you fall, we got to wait, make sure you're not hurt. After we know you're not hurt, we're glad. Just like the slow get yeah. up, just all of it. <laughs> like, why did y'all do that? That's your murder. That's a, that's, a, that's a Tim Gittins, Dwayne Jordan shit right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's like doing t- too t- much. Yeah, yeah, that's some shit Timmy would have did. Tim Gittins, headache. Yo, you see me throwing it to myself. Yo, we down seven versus King. What are you talking about? Why would you do that right now? And he threw it from oh, yeah. he threw it from the three point line. <laughs> like, what was he thinking? Yeah. Okay, so granted that yeah. the Bulls did lose one twenty eight to one seventeen. If you guys were the coach, what would you tell both of the players? Now that's a suspension. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one game suspension right there. No, I'm saying this Adam Silver wouldn't do anything about this. If I was the coach, I probably would um it it definitely going to be some <laughs> reprimanding behind that. I don't know, they probably I'm, have to I run keep some looking more at it cuz both these both these niggas is on the floor. I keep laughing cuz <laughs> I keep looking at the <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah, and you almost injured two players with that move, which makes it a poor no, decision. <laughs> this is crazy looking at this. <laughs> but this Yo, is what, what happened. Looking? This is what happened when I'm niggas at, wear them I'm Grinches. Looking. Every time a nigga wear them Grinches, they think they Kobe on Christmas Day. That's probably what he was thinking. If you look at his sneakers, he got the Grinches on. <laughs> You know, I, yeah. 
<laughs> he had the Grinches on. You know, that's when Kobe went crazy. You, you had them Grinches on, you got to go crazy. So I know that's what he was thinking. Yeah, Andre, oh. Drummer, Andre Drummer hurt his shit on the following play down court playing defense. He ain't even hurt his shit. Homeboy got fucked up on the play. Andre Drummer hurt himself on the following play. Look, Two game suspension with two games left in the season. That's sort of fine. Yeah. You know how it used to be killer? Nigga get some Jordans on. Nigga think he might today. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Nigga had them Grinches on. Blame it on the Kobe's, you know? I think it's some truth to that. Every looking. time I wear my Yeezys, I say something wild. <laughs> I got them on. I thought about this statement I made about the ladies. I got these Yeezys on. Blame it on my Yeezys. This yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at this I'm looking at the standings, and the Bulls are in the play in no matter what in the ninth or tenth seed. So winning or losing this game didn't really matter. Um, as far as their playoff contention, it's they're in they're in the ninth ninth seed no matter what, or the tenth seed, which means they're in the playoffs. That victory wasn't going to get them uh seed up or seed down. So. Um, I think they just need to focus in and get ready for the playing because they could potentially be in the playoffs. But as far as me reprimanding, it would be like, yo, this is how we going into the playing, y'all. This is what we doing? Yeah. What the fuck are y'all doing? Like, yo, we have an opportunity to make the playoffs still. So that's how I would handle it. But but you still, you know, if this was the middle season, yeah, it would definitely be team precautions and and has it pay or suspensions, but this isn't the right time to be pulling that type shit. Not saying with the coach, I'm talking about with the players, though. We are we are potentially one game, two two wins from being in the playoffs and one loss from being out in the next few days. I think we need to zero in. And this doesn't look like they zero there. Yeah. They're zero in here, I should say. When I saw this, I thought about our high school coach, what he would have said. <laughs> oh, what? Nah, 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 nigga would have got snuffed the hat. He went like this with his glasses. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> now, if he break his wrist. If he break his wrist and he and, and, and he ends up with a bruised spine, now two of y'all are out, right? Ball. <laughs> we would have to sit at half court for two days behind him. Yo. <laughs> first, yo, first of all, first of all, our coach would have been like, whoever told you you was like that, first of all. We won't do that in practice. You who, never like who, who that. told you do not like that? <laughs> <laughs> who told you you was like that? Our coach was so and then, he was so discouraging. <laughs> you not like that. Your father was like that. <laughs> Imagine niggas telling you your father wasn't like oh, that. Oh shit. <laughs> When the Browns start being like this, <laughs> you wasn't like that, and your father wasn't hey, like yeah, that. <laughs> Niggas be standing there taking the dish. <laughs> and he would look around the room yeah. and ask niggas, is he, is he like that? <laughs> He'd say, him, is he like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody in this room know you not like that, bro. We have to go. No, he's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you, sure? you do one of these. Yeah. I, I ain't never seen a nigga do it. You I, know I, he I ain't like know. that, Cam. You know he ain't. <laughs> yeah. If you try to be neutral about it. Yeah, yeah if you try to be neutral. <laughs> Well, since he like that, do... 12, 12 yeah, go, sprints. Everybody on yeah, the I was line. just about to since say he that. Like that. Yeah, since, yeah, since everybody <laughs> know he like that. Since nobody want to say nothing. Y'all want to follow him. 
12 sprints. <laughs> Then niggas be like, nah, so nobody he ain't know. like that. Nah, he ain't like that. Yeah, yeah. He ain't like that. Yeah. Me, meanwhile, yeah, we you had got, the worst you coach sit, in the world. Oh, yeah. you, he was so you gotta sit here. Yeah. When, when it was, and meanwhile, while you sitting there and, and it's you, he talking about you got to eat it. Yeah. You got to just sit there. And try and defend yourself without talking. Imagine trying to defend yourself without talking. Because <laughs> any answer you, you give is going to lead to yeah, punishment. Yeah. He yeah, said, yeah, oh, he no like that? To give. You, you going to yeah. follow him on that? <laughs> yeah. Follow him up the stairs now. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, doing yeah. 20 <laughs> flights now. Yo, yeah. not be in the back uh, like, nah, he not like shit. that. He, I didn't say he was like that. Camden said he was like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Oh, That's all shit. I kept That's thinking when he threw that ball off the backboard. Like, this is going to cost everybody. Right. We're not going to touch the ball pause for two weeks for this. Yo, we had practices with no basketball. <laughs> yeah, <Hey>. that's a fact. <laughs> Since y'all don't know how to move the basketball. <laughs> we'll practice without it. Yeah. Are you in your zone? <laughs> yeah, I'm in my zone. <laughs> Nigga don't know where the ball at. Why you ain't rotating? <laughs> Nigga, I don't know where the ball at. The ball's over here. <laughs> it's no ball. They said, give me the ball. Give me the ball. I told you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody oh, know where the oh, ball shit. at. Where's the ball at, Mace? Where's the ball at? <laughs> the ball, the I got the ball. ball. Why are you over on the baseline? <laughs> I got the ball. I got the ball. Where should you be at? <laughs> Yo, that thing oh, was shit. hilarious. Oh, man. All that over that Good. dunk. No, because it was so fun. Like, I don't even comment under sports highlights and stuff like that, but I commented under that one because I was dying. It was so funny. But see that yeah. y'all can relate. So, okay. So, last one before we wrap. Um, LeBron was speaking about Steph Curry and he said, guarding Steph is uncomfortable. He said, the ball is not the problem with Steph. He's the problem. Steph is most dangerous when he doesn't have the ball. It's not many guys in our league that's most dangerous without the ball. And then he said, even though guarding Steph is uncomfortable, guys in the league aren't used to being uncomfortable. That's why Steph and the Golden State will always be relevant because they play an uncomfortable style of play. What do you guys take away from what LeBron had to say? I think that was a, a um a monumental um statement by LeBron, but it speaks to how well he moves without the ball. And um I can only remember one other player that was like that that um that you really feared them even touching the ball, and that was um Reggie Miller. He would run similar, but I don't even think Reggie ran as much as um Steph run. I think Steph runs a little bit more than Reggie. So that was some high praise coming from LeBron. And um, I think it's merited, though. I think as dangerous as he is with the ball, he is just as dangerous because you got to follow him everywhere because he can hit, hit a shot from anywhere. Before the shots that Stephen Curry is making, people used to be like this, go ahead and shoot it, go ahead and shoot it, like Caitlin did. Right. But you can't do that with him because he can hit the shot. So... Everywhere he runs, you have to you have to mirror him. What do you think, Kelly? Yeah, I think I think that's a great assessment by LeBron. And yeah, you got to think about this. This is very annoying for a defender to chase a nigga all game because he's running through screens. He's doing. I see one when they did the dosi do. They put the arm around each other and spun off each other on a, on a loop. The way that they get Steph Curry open with with Steve Curry and his team draws up is amazing. Um, 
because it's it's not traditional guard, and you really have to chase a nigga all game in a half court set, and it's annoying. It's yeah. probably super duper annoying because you you sit there, you're chilling. He could be chilling. Then the next thing you know, off and you running in the two picks. So now all he he got a three second gap on you because you done been hit with two picks. Because one minute he's standing still, then now he just takes off and runs baseline. Yeah. Comes up through the foul line, pause, and then now you got to go. You, all he needed is a three-second gap. And if you don't switch off, you just saw Steph Curry Allen, and now you're looking crazy. So I think that was a great assessment yeah. about uh, by LeBron. The only other person that comes to mind may think in the players is that would I would say is not as much as Steph, but would be right, right behind Steph is Rip Hamilton. Yeah, he had the yeah. same game. Keep running off screens, mm-hmm. running off screens, running all around, running all around. It becomes annoying. And he doesn't shoot his stuff good as stuff, Curry. But I can imagine that job is just annoying to chase a nigga all game around. Because if you're a traditional point guard and you're ready to go at the point guard when the game starts and he's not doing traditional point guard shit and now your assignment on defense is just chasing niggas, you're not in the defensive stand, mm-hmm. you know, legs bent, pours, arms out. This isn't traditional guard and a point guard. This is more like, like May said, mirroring, mirroring him and chasing him around. So that could be frustrating and not only frustrating, you got to have a stamina for that shit because it isn't traditional mm-hmm. guard and you're literally in a half court set chasing him. So I think from LeBron and May, those were two great assessments. Yeah. And, and another, another thing to go along with what um, Killer just said is that most people that you're chasing off of picks can can only shoot well from certain areas. Right. What makes this a nightmare is because Steph hits from everywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got to take all the screen serious. Right. When some players, they get around there, you just let them go because he shoots better from the perimeter. Some people shoot better from the baseline, and Steph just can hit that shot from anywhere. Hey, y'all. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, Like when they doing them two for five.